Good morning and welcome to our service today. Uh, it is the third Sunday uh, after Trinity and our service comes from Laterton. The readings are from St Paul's letter to the Corinthians and St Mark's Gospel. The sermon focuses on faith in turbulent times as Jesus sleeps in the boat whilst a storm rages and we ask how do we handle difficult times. So let us begin our service. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with song. Let's 
taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anybody's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardship, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet we are not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you, there is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Here endeth the second, the first reading. Psalm 9, verse 9 till the end. The Lord also will be a defence for the oppressed even a refuge in due time of trouble, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast never failed them that seek thee. O praise the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Show the people of his doings. For when he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them, and forgetteth not the complaint of the poor. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, Consider the trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou hatest that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show all thy praises within the ports of thy daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit they have made. In the same net which they hid privily is their foot taken. The Lord is known to execute judgment. The ungodly is trapped in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the people that forget God, for the people shall not always be forgotten. 
the patient abiding of the meek shall not perish for ever. Up, Lord, and let not man have the upper hand. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the heathen may know themselves to be but men. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 35 to 41. Jesus stills the storm. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in a boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swabbed. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Here endeth the second reading. the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. The Collect for the Third Sunday After Trinity O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to hear us, and grant that we, to whom thou hast given an hearty desire to pray, may by thy mighty aid be defended and comforted in all dangers and adversities. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, High and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Charles, Prince of Wales, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall, William and Catherine, Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates, and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for the Church and world, and thank God for his goodness. Let's pray for the Queen, the Royal Family, for the world in which we live, the people of India, for peace in Israel, for the people of Ayr and Northern Ireland, for the rollout of the vaccine to the young, for our neighbours, for our communities. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. We pray for the Diocese of Europe, Bishops Robert and David, for the Church of North India, for Pauline to be ordained priest at the end of the month. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. 
pray for the sick and the bereaved and, and any in any kind of need. For Linda, for Terry, for David, for Jeremy and Andy, for Stephanie, for Olive, for Bunty, for Janet, for Simon, for Mary. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. For those we love but see no longer. For Derek, for Wilfred, for Alex. May the souls of the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. great gale arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped but he was in the stern asleep on a cushion and i speak in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen how often have we felt like that a storm erupts around us and our faith seems powerless to do anything about it we have i'm sure all heard of someone who has lost their faith in god because of some storm that came upon them and God seemed to do nothing to stop it. The disciples were terrified. The boat was being thrown around by the waves and they thought they'd sink. Fishing boats in Galilee in the first century would probably have been fairly small affairs, <clears throat> certainly without all the technical safety equipment that modern boats and fishermen have, certainly without watertight fiberless sides nor inflatable life jackets. And if a storm suddenly got up, which anyone who has ever sailed on a lake knows can be quite alarming, they would not have had much protection. I expect many fishermen perished on the Sea of Galilee around the time of Jesus. And judging the weather was possibly a fairly important part of a fisherman's life, as it was a farmer's. 
So the poor disciples were terrified. <clears throat> and where was their saviour? Where was their God? Where was their hero? Asleep on a cushion. Many people have said to me quite angrily, where was the church during the pandemic? Why did the church shut its doors? Why did you desert us? They're asking, why were you asleep on your cushion? Well, we were trying to stop the virus spreading actually, and as we were asked to do. When a friend of mine was only last year suspended for an allegation for something he knows nothing about, he asked, where is God? Where is justice? Why won't someone tell him what he is accused of doing? On the last lap of a ministry that has lasted over 35 years and he finds himself being pushed off the games pitch for no apparent reason. His parishioners are told to get on without their vicar. They are in the dark. Nobody knows anything. Everybody is angry and upset. Where is God? He asks. They ask. Everyone wants to know. Where is Jesus? The answer, he is asleep in the stern of the boat on a cushion. On 3rd of June 19, 1886, King Mwanga of Bugunda accused 32 young Christians, Catholic and Anglican, of refusing to announce their faith and ordered them to be executed. Can you imagine knowing that unless you renounce your faith, you will be beheaded? that your life is about to come to a very sudden end. Your brother is about to lose his sister, or your sister her brother. You're about to lose your future, your marriage, children, old age. It all hinges upon you renouncing your faith. You would ask, wouldn't you, where is God? It is completely unfair. It isn't what you bought into. They must have asked, where was their God? Where is God? Where is he? He is asleep on his cushion. But they had to believe. Not a hair falls from your head without your father in heaven knowing. Those martyrs went to their death singing. They knew that God had it covered, even though he was doing nothing to stop it. It was reported in February 2015, 20 Egyptian Coptic Christians were beheaded by Daesh on a Libyan beach. What was their crime? They were Christians. They must have wondered, where was their God? Why is God not saving us? Yet they also died singing songs to Jesus, even though Jesus was asleep on his cushion, so to speak. He was doing nothing to stop it. Mature faith only comes when you know that God may be asleep on a cushion and not going to lift his almighty finger to stop some awful and unjust thing from happening. God on the whole does not interfere, though he knows what is happening and will make it right one day but he is unlikely to protect us in the way that we think or in the time frame that we exist in. And yet we are called to live in the belief that God protects us. Faith in God is not a this worldly safety net. That would be superstition after all. St. Paul knew suffering only too well and that God permits evil to exist, which causes us to suffer. He knew this, but he still carried on. As he writes this, as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive. 
as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. When the disciples did eventually wake Jesus up, he did restore calm. But his haunting question to them was, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Evagrius Poniticus, the fourth century Christian monk and theologian said, don't refuse to be poor and tried by tribulations. They are the fuel that makes prayer easy. Don't refuse to be tried by tribulations. If we accept what God sends and do not run from it, then perhaps we'll find that our closeness to God increases and our prayer will become more fluid and true. Evil is permitted for some reason which we may, we may never fully understand to exist. Therefore we will suffer and others will suffer. And if God is asleep on his cushion and we cannot rouse him, we must accept that he will make things right in his own time, that he has it covered, that he counts every care hair on our head. Perhaps it is such trials that prove our faith. Amen. Let us pray for God's blessing on our lives and on those whom we love and those for whom we've prayed today. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Thank you.